All right, so this is the um, Breach Titan deck that just top aided GP Bilbao. Um, the lands are pretty standard, I feel like. Um, you can always change what you want for the fetch lands. Um, here we they are running a Windswept and then two Bloodstained Myers. Uh, but other than that, it's usually pretty stocked to get like six mountains, two forests, um, six duels. And usually I prefer the stomping grounds over the center glades because there's always the chance that you draw the center glade and you can't uh, bring it in untapped. Um, so I, I, I do like the fact that they are on four of those stomping grounds. Four Valakuts. And then after that, um, there's some other cards that you usually will expect. Um, four Search for Tomorrow is pretty standard. Four Sakuras. Um, people have been messing around with the Farsi counts, um, if they're running Prismatic or not. People some like to run the one of what elves. Um, this deck is running three uh, Summoner's Pact. I've seen a lot of times where I, I would just do two. Um, four Bolts, two Sweltering Suns. Some people are playing Angers right now because um, they're pretty good for exiling cards. Um, here's where the deck changes that I've seen. It's only running one Scape Shift instead of like the four of. And it's running four through the breaches, and it's running two hour of promise. It's got the four prime times, and then it's also running a one of woodfall primes, which I'm really digging. Um, over in the cyborg, we've got two ancient grudges, two anger of the gods, and then we've got a beast within, a rex sage, two trackers, two bailoffs, a carnage trainer, uh, a graph digger's cage, two relics, and an ee. So, pretty excited to try out that list. I've uh, I played in Titan Shift for a long time. I never got around to playing the breach Titan version, so. Um, getting a good chance to play right now. So, let's get it going. It's been interesting to see how uh, these different decks are playing out in the in the meta right now. It's kind of crazy. Like uh, GP Bilbao had a lot of um, a lot of graveyard based decks, which is to be expected. So we will take the play. Alrighty. So this hand. I think we're good to keep. It's got a turn two ramp. Uh, we'll get a little bit of interaction. Hopefully we can get to the uh, fifth mana here for our promise. And if we can get something else for the through the breach, we're going to be set. So keep this. Lead off with the Valakut here and pass it over to them. No need to hold up the bolt usually on turn one, and I'm usually okay with that. So I wanted to make sure it sounds at a good level. And then it's a Titan. So let's go Force, and we're going to Far Seek. Uh, so I'm going to grab a Stomping Ground here because once we play our other mount, anything, any Cineglades we get will be able to come to play untap without shocking us. So um, potential prevention of damage there would be nice. Thing 
Okay. Search for tomorrow's good. Let's go ahead and cast that. Get ourselves a mountain, and we will pass it over. So next time we can breach or our promise. Uh, I'm gonna love if we can get a land if they're tapped out. We can just go through the breach, drop a titan, get some triggers going on, and then just go crazy. get to through the breach here just think about the lands we want to get if we don't get a land at all we'll want to go valakut and then a mountain and then when we swing with prime time we'll get two more mountains um i expect for them to swing at us so then we'll be able to kill them if they're tapped out See what they're thinking about. So they're going to surgical us, um, and they're targeting their own opt. That's odd. Like, I don't know why you wouldn't just surgical your opponent, right? Like, get the free information, potentially stop them from doing stuff. Kind of weird. But okay, opponent, do your thing. going to bolt them. As we can take the damage and as soon as our opponent lets us go through the breach we would gladly take a prime time we do want to use your abilities. And so what I, what I was talking about earlier with the, the lands here, um, if you have two, if anyone has never played Titan, uh, Titan Shift before with the Valakuts, if you have your sixth and any other mountains come to play at the same time, uh, they both get to trigger. So what we're doing here is we're grabbing a Valakut and a Stomping Ground. And so we'll have two Valakuts in play and we'll have four mountains in play. And then when we swing here, we're going to be putting two more, going to fetch two more mountains, and they will see each other, and then we'll get two triggers each of those because of the two valid cuts in play. So then this is going to allow us to deal um, 12 damage to our opponent, plus if Titan, Titan Swing will itself, we'll do another six. So opponent's done there. Alrighty, so potential cards that we want to snag here the relics 
Graph Digger seem pretty relevant. Um, Angers hit their Phoenixes, uh, but misses on the Thing in the Ice and the Drakes if they're playing those. Um, Carnage Tyrant can just drop in. Baylos can get us some life. Um, this for a grindier matchup, so there's not any... They do tend to sometimes play a Blood Moose so that might be worth bringing in there. Um, I do want to take out the Sweltering Suns. I think if we're going to be playing Sweltering Suns, I'd rather just play Anger the Gods. Um, I'm fine with trimming the Wood Elves as well. Uh, the more expensive spells here, the Hour of Promise, I'm okay with trimming. I think, because we as long, as long as we can get our game plan going, we're going to be just fine to take over the game. I don't mind bringing in the one of Rexage here, just in case they do. Um, they are just going to bring in that Blood Moon that I'm expecting, so... Why don't we bring in the two Relics, one Cage, one Bailoff, and one Sage, and we'll take out the two Sweltering Suns, the Wood Elves, and the Hour of Promise. Let's run that. My teammates and I are trying to go to the next open here in Ohio, and I'm not 100% on a deck yet. A lot of them are pretty solid on decks and know what they want to play, but I'm not quite there. I don't know. I feel like, uh, you know, in modern, the biggest thing that you want to do is play a deck that you're very comfortable with and you're happy with. And um, I haven't had a deck that I've just been in, in love with for a while, and... I, I play, you know, decks because I enjoy them, but there's not, like, that that singular deck. Like, man, that's my deck. That's the deck I want to play. Okay, so this hand's really slow. Um, we can bolt away their threats, but we're just not ramping at all. We're not on our game plan, so I just don't think we can keep this. Hands also not doing much. Ugh. One of those packs was another land or a ramp, so I'd be much happier here. Um, I think we're okay to keep this. I'm not really happy with this hand. Relic's pretty sweet. But yeah, I've been still been searching for that deck that I feel like I'll just be really happy with, and I just haven't found it. Let's go Wooded Foothills here, and we'll go and fetch up a green source, and we're going to run out the relic. Take a card from the opponent, and we can just pass here. You want me to play some dredge? If you want, I can swap out um, black green Tron for dredge. I don't mind doing that if you want to see it. How many 
many phoenixes are we dealing with? None. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> oh. Do you have a particular list of uh, dredge that you'd want to see played? Okay. I can definitely add it to the list of uh, decks to be played on uh, on Wednesday, though. Sweet. Yeah, send me the list and we'll uh, rock it out on. Alrighty. Blood Moon as expected. We're just gonna crack this. Right now. We can't grab another green star, so we're just gonna grab a stomping ground. Alright, so we've got the ability to. Um, Packed and get our Rex Age, which will be good for us. Um, and then blow it up if necessary. If we can just get another green source, I'd be happy because then we can just drop the bail off. I want to make sure whenever we do packed, we're going to be able to. Uh, pay for it with the double green we don't want to get hit with like we blow up their blood moon and then they just drop another one and then we just lose because of it we're not in a rush right now to do anything so i don't want to press our luck by you know requiring our stomping ground to be untouched in order to pay for that pact so Breach. Okay. It's actually pretty sweet. We get one more mana. We can breach. We can pack for a Titan. And bring it in. And get all the green sources we need. Or we can get a Woodfall Primus, blow up the Blood Moon, bring it back, and then blow up the Spire. Definitely some options there. Do need to hit another mana source first, though. We do have the option to Summoner's Pact for a Sakura Tribe Elder to grab another force. Sweet! And it even comes with our own Cyborg Guide. I am in. Guys, I just want you to know if you are an avid coffee drinker like I am, I just got my hands on one of these Osaka pour overs, and uh, these are sweet. Great coffee. So they've got an island, which means they could spell pierce us, so there is a gamble to going um, summoners packed into the breach here. Um, I feel pretty safe to go pack though, because if we go pack, if they make us pay the two, we can pay for it. So let's run out the pact.
Okay. Grab the Rex Sage. And we're gonna pay for it so we can crack those fetches. Specifically cracking that wind swept so we can get another force. to pay for our pack next turn but the following turn we'll be able to pack again grab a titan and a win of particular interest for us to crack a relic so we're good with just chilling okay oh they thought scoured us oh they're gonna hit our titan uh we're going to respond and crack our relic Oh, they want to tighten again. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Not great for us, but that's fine. Like, we can deal with that. They waste, they burn two cards on that. They get our Titans. We've still got relevant threats. Um, and we can lean on that Woodfall Primus. How rude of them. Not that it matters for our deck, but they didn't click the Primeval Titan into the graveyard. Oh, okay. well, it's going to get hit with the Relic anyway. But you should always make sure to do that when you are casting your um, Surgical, that you want to click on the one in the graveyard to exile it. Because otherwise it, it doesn't exile it. You're just targeting that one first. Well, we did get a six land with this Valakut thing in the ice, okay. And looting. See how many arc lights they hit.
Just one? Come on. Just one. Or none. One or none. Not two. Don't do two. None. Okay. Got ourselves a pack trigger. I would like to prevent losing. It is in the top things I like to prevent. Right, we'll swing, see if they want to block. They shouldn't block, but because they know they we have a bolt in hand, but one can dream, you know. All right, so next one we've got a lot of options. They're gonna go with the Blood Moon. We're actually okay with that. Okay. So we can Pact here and then through the Breach. I want that Woodfall Primus. So we can hit the Blood Moon if we wanted to, but I'm not even that worried about Blood Moon right now. Let's get rid of that island first. And we can swing in. So we can either run out Sakura Tribe Elder or hold up the Bolt. Um, we're going to be able to destroy... I do think we'll want to get rid of the Blood Moon when this... Uh, is that Exile? No, Sacrifice. Yeah, Sacrifice. So then our Woodfall Primus will come back. I think we're fine to just hold that up. So... We'll die. Come back. Blow up the Blood Moon or another island. Let's blow up the Blood Moon. This way we can, we're just that much closer to getting some Valica triggers if we needed them. Opponent is not in a great spot, which is good with us. Match one in the bag. So the weather was really nice today, so I had to get out there with uh, my friends and get some disc golf in. Ran over to uh, one of the nearby parks here, JC, and uh, played around. First, first round of the year. Okay, hands not amazing. But if we hit another ram spell, we're going to be able to get an early Titan. If we get a Breach, we'll also get some pretty fun things going on with uh, Primeval and Woodfall. So we'll keep this. I 
All right, we've got the forest in hand. I was going to send out the windswept heath here uh, in case they're on something that we would want to have the forest against, but um, hmm. I'm still going to run that out just in case here. I really hate losing to like the free wind decks, so <laughs> anything we can do to prevent that, I'm going to do it. We, I, ideally here, we, we shouldn't have any issue because we're going to be able to run out the forest and then Sakura can get us another forest if we need it. But. Chalice on one, okay. Let's grab a stopping and a play tapped. Through the breach. It's like Christmas over here. All right, let's run out the Sakura. Pass it over. A blood moon. All right, we're not in a rush to actually uh, get the ramp right now, so we're okay. Because I'd rather just hit them for a little bit of damage. Okay. Run out the stomping. We'll swing in. This list only runs um, two force, so we're not going to be able to cast this Woodfall Primus if we uh, breach out the Primeval Titan. So, Chalice on two. Okay, we're still fine with that. Sack the Sakura, we're gonna go get another forest here. Alright, search for tomorrow. Pretty good. So, yeah, we can either uh, breach out the Titan to go get a bunch of stuff, but it, it's not gonna help us get, um, get out of that Blood Moon. So, I think our best plan here is to just breach out the Woodfall Primus. And then we can blow up their Blood Moon. And then we will swing in. So we do have a couple more two drop spells we may want to cast um, under the chalice here. Um, it's either that or take out one of the other things, but I feel like the ramp spell being able to cast is going to be the biggest thing. So I'm going to take care of their chalice. So then we still have like our Sakuras, our Prismatics, and our um, ex um, any of any of the two drop ramp spells. So we'll do it that way. For us, okay, sure. All right, 
so we are going to run out our prime time. And we're going to go get two Valkuts. And then we'll swing. And if the opponent doesn't get another Blood Moon down, we should have game. Even if they do get a Blood Moon down, it should probably still be game here. Because we've got so much power on board. That's a cute interaction. <laughs> dismember us <laughs> that'd be bad but then they would just die so all right so we are gonna want um the beast within here the ees the rex sages as well Going to a slower game plan doesn't seem bad to me um, by just getting out of relevant threat. And then just sitting behind it because they should have actually a pretty hard time getting around it. Um, I don't know if we want to bring in the ancient grudges for the. Um, yeah, I don't know if we want to bring in the ancient grudges for those chalices. They're annoying, but if, like. The, the one is just going to catch our bolts, and if it's a chalice on two, it's going to get all this anyway. So, um, yeah. I think I'm good with cutting the scape shift. The hour of promises. Um, I do want to keep the sweltering suns to hit all of their uh, dork plans that they might be on. Um, I don't mind cutting the prismatics here either. And I think I'm good with trimming two of the bolts and just bringing all of this in. And let's run it like that. So we're on a one lander that we can suspend search for tomorrow. This is pretty much one of the hands we want because search for tomorrow is our best turn one play. So we're going to keep this. a stomping ground here shock ourselves and cast far seek
So next turn we can we'll get a search for tomorrow off of our suspend, and then we'll also be able to cast the search for tomorrow. And then it's just a matter of finding a relevant threat. Our beast within can take care of that torpor orb, and then whatever we breach in is going to be super good. All right, blood moon. That's fine. We're going to get another green source here. So if we can manage to pass another round here, we'll beast within their torpor orb at the end of turn. Summoner's pack to get our um, Woodfall Primus. Blow up their Blood Moon. And then blow up something else. Doesn't seem bad. If we get a, if we can hit another land though, I think that'd be really sweet because we, then we'll be able to sweltering sun and take the care of their threat as well. Because that's gonna deal us a bunch of damage. Let's get rid of that threat. feel good about life whenever they're hard casting simian spirit guides Gonna blow up that torpor orb I should have tapped that if only so I could crack this woodfall. I mean this wooded foothills. And snaring bridge. Okay. As long as they don't have another torpor orb. Nope, they do have another torpor orb. <laughs> okay. This is rougher. You can still get them, but I have to work for it now. So we definitely want those ancient grudges. can EE -E on two. I'm only going to grab one here. If we can get a Valakut. 
still going to be in a pretty good spot. Um, we could pack for a tracker and start getting a bunch of landfall triggers because we can't get a Rex Sage to blow up anything. Prime time can't swing either right now. So I feel like our best bet is uh, tracking into a um, an EE to blow up the Torpor Orb. can fall back on just killing our opponent with Valakut triggers, but we'd love to get one more Valakut in play. Ah, they got a Blood Moon. How rude. Well, I do want to prevent that. Let's not die. There's the Rex Sage that can't do anything. Can't cast the Far Seed. And uh, the other Breach doesn't do anything right now. So let's just pass it over to our opponent. We need them not to get a Perforos because then they can start really killing us. Alright, we got a land. Let's cast the Far Seek. that EE relatively soon. Yeah! Awesome! Okay, so... We can run that out. We're not gonna crack it yet. And the reason being is that I don't want to get stuck in a situation where they cast another Torp Orb after us blowing up this one. So we're just going to cast it, pass, turn to them, see what they got going on. Um, and then we'll plan on doing it at the end of turn. And then we'll wreck Sage. And we can blow up the Blood Moon. Or we can blow up the Ensnaring Bridge. So we'll see where we're at. Chalice on one, that's fine. Crack this, get rid of that torpor orb. Okay. So we can either blow up the blood moon and then we can start hitting them with Valica triggers. Or we can blow up the ensnaring bridge and then go for the swings right now. We swing on them. They are not required to block. They can swing back on us. Potentially lethal. Because that's going to be activate, pump up their dudes. Also, random map the final turn. Feels like the better play is to be able to start swinging, though. Mm 
Or we can six them this turn. Plus some extra draws. Yeah, you know what? Let's hit the Blood Moon. Draw a card, see if we hit a prime time, because that would be the best. Nope. So we've got, after this, we'll have three more bullets in the deck. To a virtual two. Let's far seek one more time here. Grab the cinder blade. Hit them. Is that another Blood Moon? Okay, PM gear. Okay. Well, they can start chipping away at so us in the air. Oh, or we get a Sweltering Suns. I think I'm fine just to wipe the board with this. We lose our Rex Age, but that's not really right. All right, so mountain here. Shoot them, draw another card. Draw card. Prime time. Man. I believe we have one force. No, we have, uh, that's it. All right? No, that's, uh, five mountains. So we have one force left in the deck. Um, let's run out the Sakura. And we'll just hold on to it. Now that if we have one more mount with this game, right? Am I dumb right now? Or am, am I right? <laughs> was I not yeah, I was not counting the land in our hand, was I? Because that's lethal. <laughs> oh, I'm dumb. Okay, well we win. <laughs> Ooh. 
Yay! All right, two and zero. Oh, starting off strong. So strong, we're making money. I bet. Get another five zero league. Let's go. Let's go. I feel like the price of modern has gone back up on MTG, which makes me happy. More and more people are playing it, so can't beat that. Okay, so this hand is interesting because uh, it's got Prismatic Omen and then two Valakuts. So if we get like one ramp spell, this hand's like really nuts. Even without the ramp spell, this hand has like pretty high potential here. So let's try it out. It's a bit suspect, but it's fine. It's fine, folks. We'll lead off with the Valakut. Humans? Humans. Cool. Well, we've got a bolt for them. And we've got a Sakura. Okay. Now, in case they have a kite sail, I want to run out the Prismatic. And we'll pass it over. Champion on champion. Okay, well, we're gonna run out this. Run out our Sakura. And pass it over. Another champion, okay. Opponent's going strong with those. See if they want to take the bolt or the breach. Bolt. So we need to hit a basic land off the top, or an untapped land off the top. Unless they got another kid sale. Okay, they got a meddling mage. Unfortunately, that means it's game. Sadness. Okay, so we want to bring in the Angers for sure. And I want to bring in the EE. Uh, Bailoffs aren't terrible. Eat up their board, block a bunch of stuff. So I think that's where I'd want to be. Uh, I want to take out the Scape Shifts, the Hour of Promises here. Um, the prismatic omen as well stop them off their game plan i think we can just win from there i actually don't mind trimming the woodfall primus and bringing in what the keeping one of the prismatics so let's do that okay Seeing seems solid. Let's keep this. We can go Sakura into Obstinate Bailoff into a Breach on Titan. As long as they don't take our Breach. Yeah, if the sequencing in the last game would have gone just a tiny bit better, we would have been able to... Um, pretty crazy there because we would have been able to uh, 
as soon as we landed the Titan, it was game um, breaching it out. It, hitting another ramp, uh, hitting a ramp spell actually there on the last try would have been relevant too, because then we would have got uh, two triggers and would have been able to start taking out their cards. So let's go Sakura and pass it over. Okay, that's fine. We'll grab a mountain here. Shock ourselves. And run out this bail off. Bugler is fine. Tenet. Unfortunately, we can't go through the breach this turn, so we're just going to play Valakut. I don't see the need to swing here either, so we're just going to pass it over. Kind Sail is going to take one of our breaches. And then we're just going to plan on dropping a prime time and start wrecking them. Or through the breaching it. Okay, through the breach it. Like, if we threw the breach, we'd be able to go land Valakut. Then, yeah, that's, it'll be game. So, pretty good. Let's run it again. Hands pretty good. We're gonna go turn one search for tomorrow, turn two far seek, turn three sweltering suns. So let's keep this. And they don't have a turn one play either. Wow, this is so good. And with your anger, oh my gosh. I swear if they go like kite sail, kite sail, I'm gonna cry. There's the first one. Don't have a second one, opponent. Don't have a second one. Oh, boy. Oh, they took the Farsi. Okay. Their game plan. Champion's fine. <laughs> Is that meddling mage gonna name our search for tomorrow? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, we need a land. Come on, land. Oot. I cast anger there because I want to be able to. Uh, um, I want to be able to cycle sweltering suns if we need to later. Yeah. They, they, they definitely did that to us. They, they went the right line, I feel like, to pressure us. Fortunately for us, we were able to get out of under it. Um, let's go Woodfall here, uh, Wood Elves here. Get ourselves a stopping ground tap, so we'll pass it over. Milling Mage, 
they're gonna name our sweltering suns, I imagine. Yep. Okay. We can bail off here, gain four life, or we can far seek. I feel like our far seek is where we wanna be. There's like the line where we could cycle, hit it on tap land, and then far seek, but that seems that seems pretty pretty nutsy and pretty ballsy. So we're just gonna far seek here. And we'll pass it over. What's this middling mage gonna name? Prime time? Prime time. Alrighty, so we can just bolt this one. Sweltering Suns, and we'll pass it over. We are just being extremely rude to our opponent right now. it over. We really need to hit a land. I got what I asked for, so. Alright, well, we're passing it back. If they go Mantis Rider, if I was attended, or double Mantis Rider, it's game. It's not as bad, we can block that. Okay. I can deal with that as well. Reflector Mage. Or De Deputy of Detention. Okay. That's going to leave us at one. Okay. So we drop. Primeval Titan, go get two mountains, hit the Deputy of Detention and the Mantis Rider, get our bail off back in four, and that should be it from there. Deck is doing pretty well. I'm digging it. Thank you for everybody for joining me. So we are planning on playing uh, the rest of this league here with uh, Breach Titan, and then we'll be swapping over to Black Green Tron. So. And 
I do stream every Sunday night from 6 till 10 and uh, every Wednesday night from 6 to 10. Uh, the Wednesday night one can change depending on how my school goes, but right now we're still pretty solid to run that for a while. So what's everybody think about where the modern format is right now after these last couple big events and regionals and everything? You guys feel like it's in a good spot right now? Or are you guys just waiting for uh, on the faithless looting ban bandwagon? Um, where are you guys at with all that? Yeah, I do like the format right now, but you are right. There's a lot of graveyard nonsense going on right now. And that's even with, like, all the, like, we have a great bunch of graveyard hate. And it just doesn't matter. I'm glad that those decks aren't just dead because of it, but it's pretty crazy how well they can function even with graveyard hate. Like, you drop a rest in peace and they're just like, I don't care, that's fine. We'll deal with that at some point and then beat you. I do like uh, Is It Phoenix and how they're able to do a pretty transformative plan. We're going to keep this. We've got Far Seek Sakura, and then we can pack it into the Titan. So, pretty happy with this hand. And we've already got one Valakut in play. As long as they're not a, um, a Blood Moon deck, we should be pretty solid here. Even if they are, we can Far Seek and Sakura. We'll just want to make sure we do it right away. Looks like they are a, a Chalice deck. Let's see if they're a Blood Moon deck as well. We don't have a way to make sure we have the green source next turn, so we're just gonna have to uh, just gonna have to play and pass turn. Quarter. Is this Eldrazi? Okay, that makes me feel better. We're gonna wood it here. And I'm gonna go fetch a green source. Just in case. And we're gonna run out Sakura. I'm like really excited from um, Modern Horizons to see what they can do for us. Okay, so they're the Eldrazi, call us Eldrazi deck. We're okay with that. We'll want to hold on to our Valakut until we have to throw it out there. Just because we don't want to get hit by that Ghost Quarter. So why don't we go... Farsi Cure. We could just run it out. Uh, well, we can run out the Prismatic now. And then next turn we should be in a pretty good spot. Alright. So we'll go this. Drop the Prismatic. And we'll send it their way. I do actually hope Jun gets good stuff. I've always like when I when I used to play modern the first time, Jun was like your number one deck. Like it was just solid tier one, tier two deck that was always relevant, had a good matchup against everyone, and it just was really skill intensive to play that deck. And I always enjoy having 
that kind of deck in the format. It allows it, it allows things to just be in control and not get all that kind of craziness that you can get because you have a hand a deck that is just a mid rangey. We're gonna hold your hand from just doing anything too stupid. Um, and it was a good check on the format. And like having that and a they're gonna they're gonna fall on us. Okay, that's fine. They're going to take our Pact here. But on our turn, we're going to be able to go... Well, Valakut only deals it 3 damage. There we go. We need a good, good game plan real quick. Um, but yeah, I, I can see Jun getting... They don't need that much to... Uh, we're just good at this game. Oh, I should have just had that for mana. I haven't played with Prismatic in a while, and that was a mistake. Because we could have just had to for mana and held it up as a um, a bullet later on. Alright, well, prime time here. Get two Valakuts. They're going to deal all sorts of damage. I want to take out their Thought Knot to draw another card. Kill their Mimic, and then shoot them. And we'll pass it back. We're in a pretty great spot. If they want to ghost quarter us, yeah, it didn't really matter. Okay. So they are on the Eldrazi deck. I feel like we're good. Uh, if they want to rip our hand apart, we can help value them a good bit with those kind of cards. Um, the Sweltering Suns aren't as great. Because they hit the Mimics and the Matter Reshapers, but they don't hit like the Thought Knot and they don't hit the Smashers, which we care about much more. Bolts are relevant. I don't mind trimming a bit of them. I don't mind... I keep trimming the Hour of Promise and they're like... <laughs> I know why they're there, because they, they act as a uh, light primeval titan, but I keep cutting them. Um, yeah, because I feel like I'm going to cut the Hours of Promise here and like one bolt and bring in all of this. I think I'm happy with that. I am on Stream Decker, but if you guys did need the list for the what we're playing right now, I just linked it for you. I'm like excited to see Shadow Zoo take down, um, get into the top eight there of uh, GP. Just checking if Graph Digger's Cage also set Exile, but it doesn't. It just says Graveyards and Library. <laughs> it brings back memories. This is this is a sweet deck. I still love this deck. It's like always just been like a consistent deck. It's never been like amazing. Oh, you played it in standard? Yeah, I loved it in standard. So we had what uh, Sphere of the Sun, Solemn, Simulacrum, and <laughs> that was fun. I, I enjoyed that format. I think. I don't know if you remember this, but that was like the year that pile shuffling got really big and like became the biggest deal. 
you had to uh, everybody had to get pile shuffling in and this was before the rule that you you could only pile shuffle once per um per offering eternal scourge they just double simian there they're down to one card in hand what opponents opponents going hard okay well, compared to our opponent, we're not doing much here. We're gonna go land go. <laughs> yeah, sad robot. Yeah, like everybody had to get like super good at pile shuffling, so it, like you you had to like know how to quickly pile shuffle. I always found that hilarious because, I mean, I was obviously on that as well, and I and I definitely learned how to pile shuffle as fast as possible. So like, I still have the habit of doing it now. Like, I don't feel like that was a reasonable hand to keep. I mean, at five, I don't even know. <laughs> okay, at least I have another land. Oh, they're gonna piff. If they piffing me to wooded, foot fo wooded foothills right here, I'm gonna cry. Okay. I feel a little bit better about that. <laughs> at least we can play a land. Uh, oh, I, I, I can cast Sakura. I should have that. Yeah, like, um, everybody got really good at doing the pile shuffles and, you know, could you, can you do it one-handed, can you do uh, two piles at a time kind of thing. I was, it was funny. I always appreciated that time. Like, the little things that people really get into in Magic. Alright, well, another land's good. We can run out the Sakura here, and then we're going to pass. We'll... Most likely just block and then we'll run out of bail off and then another bail off. Uh, it's that or go to eight? No, we'll just go to eight. Wooded foothills, we'll get ourselves a cinder glade. Into the vaults and OG John. Uh, yeah, you're talking about the uh, <laughs> John where we were like playing Putrid Leech and Sprouting Thrine Axe, Blood Braids, Bit Blast. Like, that was like half the meta. Oh, yeah, and Blightning. Obviously, Blightning. Biggest deal ever. Um, we can either search for tomorrow here or bail off. I think I'm just going to go bail off here because next turn we can just go through the breach. And then that'll be game. <laughs> oh, yeah. I loved that five color cascade deck. That deck was so stupid. Like, no matter what, you would end your chain with either an Esper Charm to make him discard two or a Blightning to make him discard two. Or you draw two. Like, all the value. Weren't they Jun Mirrors? Just whoever hit, um, whoever hit Blightning first, and then whoever, and then whoever got to go Bloodbraid into Blightning. Like, if you did that, you won the game. Okay, they're gonna dismember that. Swing in, we'll block. I actually wouldn't block, we'll just take it, go to 11 here. And we're gonna breach in our primeval tiny, we'll get a Valakut and a mountain, and then get two more and we win the game. Yeah, the awkward future leech standoffs were always the best because it was like, it showed how good you were at knowing when to activate the uh, the future leech Woo, we are four and oh going into the last one yeah exactly like who pumps first do they have the bolt um are they going to respond that was that was some next level stuff 
<laughs> so, like, if anyone wasn't around during then, one of the other fun things that happened as a result of Jun dominating the format was uh, spreading seas decks, okay? So, like, spreading seas decks, you know, we deal with that now in Modern, and uh, um, Murpho plays it. And sometimes you'll see Blue White play it. And, um... They would play Spreading Seas on Jund decks because Jund decks were, had the greediest mana base. And so something that naturally occurred from it is um, <laughs> the sideboards of Jund decks started playing Sidractus Spectre because they could cast it because you cast Spreading Seas on them. <laughs> oh yeah, Kyle loves uh, Spreading Seas. He also loved any, like, those, like, Cascade Enchantment decks. The lock decks. He played Time Sieve. He played uh, Rune Flare Trap. Like anything he can do to play a relevant deck that wasn't a tier one deck, he was on board. I think one of my favorite decks to come out of that era, though, was the um, Naya Lightsaver, was really sweet. That deck was a lot of fun. It was like the good to the evil that was Jund. But then um, eventually people uh, got on to the... Oh, this hand's, this hand's a bit slow, but has a good payoff, so let's keep it. Um, the, the Eldrazi Conscriptions deck. Uh, so if you didn't play it then, one of the cool things you could do was um, you'd ramp into... Uh, Sovereigns of Lost Alara, which was a 5 or a 6 drop that was blue and white. And when you attacked with a creature, you'd be able to go get an, an enchantment from your deck and put it, uh, an aura from your deck and put it into play. So what you would do is you would just like ramp out. Um, you would just ramp out and then get a uh, Sover uh, an Eldrazi Conscription and put this massive pump spell on your creature and hit them and then next turn you swung you get to do annihilator too it was so stupid and you would play like vengevine and just like value creatures so it just didn't matter okay we need i'm gonna play cinder glade here because i want i don't want to play the valka because i want to increase our mountain count we definitely need to hit um a breach here would be amazing. Blood Moon? Blood Moon. Okay. That puts us in a rough spot. We're going to be hit for quite a bit here. A through the breach would still be amazing. Mind Meld? Oh, man. Prismatic? Okay. Are we dead though? Yeah, it is for one, two, three, pump six, plus two. We're at two. We're pretty much dead. Yeah, wet John, that's what they called it. Yeah, I love the bank inscriptions deck. I also loved um, Super Friends. That that was something to appreciate. So we need like a Sweltering Suns here. Prime Time doesn't cut it. Because we can block this, we'll have enough tokens. So let's just concede here. Okay. So this time, let's bring in the EEs, that, Rex Sage. We're going to bring in the Angers. I am going to bring in the Ancient Grudges this time. And we'll bring in the Baylos as well. Take out the Hours. The Prismatics. Super Friends was so good. I don't mind cutting the bolts here because we're going to be bringing in. Let's try it. Like, obviously, I'm just playing around with uh, what I'm feeling is the best options here. Um, I think they have Chalice on one. So, like, let's just cut that out of our deck. And then 
we have the swelterings and the angers to deal with their little dudes. Oh yeah, I remember you were big on allies, man. I think you still rock allies. Ah, oh, this hand's kind of awkward. So we have a turn. We have our best turn one play, and we have a Valakut, but we don't have anything to do with this breach. Hmm. We're gonna keep this, but this is a little suspect. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't just pass. Like Super Friends, at least was like a. If uh, oh, if anyone doesn't know what a Super Friends is, it was the original Planeswalkers deck. You would play like four Elspeths, four Jace the Mind Sculptors, four Gideons. Um, you were the deck that just wanted to power out. They got a Blood Moon to turn one. That's like really impressive. Ritual. Chandra turn one. That's pretty dope. And not good for us. <laughs> um. And then, like, it, it was just a Planeswalker deck. That's all you did. You just played Planeswalkers, and you'd play also Martial Coup to wipe the board. Um, so it was just Wrath Spells, Counter Spells, good stuff that way. Um, a Johnny Vigent was the best. Like, that was the card. And people always remember that card better than it really was, which always cracks me up. Because people always think it taps something now, but it just keeps it tapped. We, like, really need to... Nope, not draw land. That was, that was what we did not want to get. Okay. We need to draw, like, a prime time on our turn or something to do with a Chandra because if, it gets, if they get to... Um, if they get to act, uh, go back to their turn to ult it, we're pretty much dead. And they chalice us on zero to stop our pack. Smart. Smart. And we hit another land. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we're living on a thread now. Because they're going to alt Lashandra. And we got to hope they don't cast spells. <laughs> this hand was suspect, I know. Uh, if we would have hit another a spell or a... Um, a, uh, a, th uh, a target for breach that we would have won the game, I feel, so. Alright, we can definitely still win if we hit a prime time. Good thing they can't cast that Blood Moon. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, that's game. Yeah, cruel, uh, cruel control, I think, was actually right before then with... Um... Do they not have a spell? Oh my gosh. We have a chance? Okay. Can we kill them? All right, we go Mountain, Breach, go get a Mountain and a Valakut, Swing, get two more Mountains. Oh boy. <laughs> we should not have won that. 
Oh, wow. Yep, yeah, if I remember correctly, the Grixis um, deck with Cruel Ultimatum was in the era of uh, fairies, wasn't it? Like, I think there were still some versions of it being played, but I think it was super popular during that era. Uh, because it had the, the volcanic fallout to deal with the bitter blossoms. I would like to pay two life, and I would like to suspend. They're on a one lander? Their hand must be nuts. Eidolon, sure. Let's get a forest in play just in case. We can either go search for tomorrow and Sakura here, take a bunch of damage, but then next turn win with... We're taking two, four, six. Hmm. Two, four, six, and then um, between the two spells over the two turns, and then they'll be hitting us as well. That's eight. I think that's fine. So we'll be able to soak up to some of it with the block. So let's grab the mountain. Run out the tribe elder. And we'll pass it over. They blood moon us, that's fine. We'll play Rex Age and blow it up. Very good chance that we'll want to block and get a force though, just in case they do blood moon us. Yeah, there was this ad nauseum that can... Alright, Snaring Bridge, okay. Okay, they wanted to pack there. Let's see. We can run up Baloff and Rexage. Rexage hitting the um, the Chalice on zero, and then next turn go for the Summoner's Pack play. I think that seems pretty good. It might be a little greedy because we really should be holding the Rexage for a. for a blood moon, but let's see where this gets us. crazy decks that pop up on standard I feel like in that era like because you had so many cards you can play around with there was the swans deck that popped up too all right blood moon that's fine so what we can do here is summoners pact um, 
Yeah, we did not take them out. So, uh, Summoner's Pact for Primordial. Not Primordial. Uh, Sylvan. Not Sylvan. Is that Sylvan? Okay. Uh, for what's his ever his name is. And hit the Ensnaring Bridge. Swing with our team. It comes back and we'll blow up the Blood Moon. Primus. That's a thing. Primus. You can brew quite a few janky modern decks right now, honestly. Um, and as long as you're going to like F and M's, usually you're gonna have a good time. It's just when you go to like big events that you, you have a harder time bringing anything that's not um, a well-tested, played-out deck, just because that's just how it is. All right, we got an EE. -E. That's pretty good. We'll swing in here with the Rex Sage, hit him for two. Rebel Master. We got a token that's gonna have to swing. We'll block it. This way we can swing with our Rex Sage. Nope, unless it casts a spell. Yeah, they are braided. Should have blocked with the Woodfall Primus, I suppose. That was my mistake. We took out both Prismatics. Okay. I don't want to play the land. It's potentially damaged later on. Um, and I'm, I'm going to hold on the, uh, the Anger right now. Because they can play more threats and then we can wipe them all out. But yeah, and, and like I said, man, we have a lot of cards. So whatever you want to play, we can definitely get our hands on it. Realistically, so. Okay, another Rival Master. That's good. So here we can just kill them over two turns. We'll go Anger, wipe the board. Drop a Valakut. Pass it over. And our turn. Kill him with this mountain for three. Boom. Oh yeah. The 5 0 money. That was nice. That was good. I like this thing. This breach is fun. Alright. So I'm going to take a quick break here and then I'm going to come back. And then we will jump on to Black Green Tron. Alright, I am back. Oh, I should have stopped recording that video.